Hey, thanks for joining. Um, thanks for joining everyone. Uh, today is where I get to share our learnings from all the work we're doing with our clients, utilizing our data, analytics, and capability to assess risk, and all the while enjoying a beverage. I'm having an espresso today, and I'm hoping you guys are enjoying your beverage with me as well. My name is Lee Mal. I'm a product manager, and my product area is commercial fraud. I work hands-on with many of our customers across all different industries to understand the latest trends within their business or in their specific industries as well. And many times it's to identify a specific trend in terms of having an unsolved challenge or just some existing challenge that they just need help with right now. Um, today we'll talk about a very hot topic, uh, the different type of frauds I think you could expect during this economic environment and a few ideas and actions you could take back to your business to hopefully help mitigate the fraud risk in these specific areas. Well, wow, wow, a lot has changed since we last took a break together and let's not wait any time and just dive right in. I think this slide is a very good summary of the macro level trends we're seeing within US today. Um, I'm really gonna be focused on the very right hand bucket there, highlighted in yellow under fraud. I'll touch on each of the fraud bullet points today and why it's important to keep in mind. You know, as many of us and many of you are shifting to serving those, serving, serving those who prefers an experience that doesn't require face-to-face -face interactions, we just need to remind ourselves that that also opens up to new opportunity for fraudsters to attack. So in fact, many of these cases, that's the fraudsters, that's the preferred channel to attack to as well. Uh, phishing scams are at all-time high, leading to more identity thefts. Uh, in, the, in the next few slides, we'll talk more specific about the type of application frauds I believe will be increasing this, during this time period. And then we'll wrap our session with a strategy you might consider employing your own business and a few of the high risk conditions you may want to consider looking out for. So just a little under a year ago, we commissioned a study from Forrester, a leading global research advisory firm who surveyed over 165 risk and credit decision makers in the US. And one of the statistics that came out um, is showing up on the screen is that more than one and more than one in three businesses have been victimized by some type of fraud. And they laid out here all the, the largest types of frauds um, they've identified, first one being falsifying income, second being first party fraud, and then shortly following that loan stacking as well. Now the survey was conducted in a pre-pandemic time, which is why I think it's even more important to ensure you're preparing yourselves for fraud because these numbers are expected to rise significantly based on current market conditions. Now, one of the drivers I've touched on already is the availability of identity data to fraudsters today. Many business identity information used on applications are publicly available. And the dark web remains one of the prime marketplaces for compromised consumer information selling and buying. Now, data from our last May 2020 report from experienced dark web surveillance technology cyber agent is showing we have, we're seeing a six, 652% year-over-year increase in personal information records found on the dark web per week. You know, other striking data from that May report shows that there's been a 130% year-over-year increase of new data sources feeding into the dark web, and then a 63% year-over-year increase of social security numbers on the dark web as well. Now, identity information is readily available to fraudsters, so that, I think that's ever more important that we apply a layer approach to our fraud strategy by leveraging and combining things like device intelligence, bio behavior, uh, behavior biometrics, alternative data, credit data analytics to identify uh, fraud more consistently. Now, early indications are that application fraud is expected to increase by threefold. Now, during this global crisis, there's been a, a rise in consumer concern and fear. In parallel, there's been limitations put on many businesses and that economic downturn ensued. Now, many of you and your business are responding to this call and providing relief to your communities and customers in response to the econ economic needs of those impacted by the pandemic. Now, while your attention has shifted to focus on helping your customers and communities while also balancing the need for maintaining your, keeping your business afloat and operational, managing your risk, your existing risks and customers, as well as their customer experiences, fraudsters will use this unique opportunity for exploitation. Now your, your fraud risk during these times will be very different from the past times where we have similar situations with the economic downturn. Now, many of the support that you're offering 
um, to your community may come in the form of allowing customers to use credit beyond established limits, temporary or credit, the temporary, temporary or permanent credit line increases, payment deferrals or holidays, or going fees, reducing payments, um, easing return policies, reducing collection attempts. All of, the, all of this is meant to provide relief to all your different customers, but this also creates that prime opportunity for fosters to act undetected and increase their, uh, their gains through through your barriers because they have the same access to the same uh, funds and relief that are being offered by you. Additionally, there's been rampant phishing scans, as I mentioned. Um, they're definitely having success there. Personally, I received multiple phone calls just yesterday, and even text messages telling me that many of my accounts are at risk and are, are meant to be deactivated, and you need to go to this specific link um, to make sure that they, they stay activated. Lucky enough, I was really understand these were not from official, official channels, but I don't think, uh, but many of us though, will also, uh, will not see it that way. And this will lead into the increased identity theft that I mentioned. So um, the interactions between you and your customers have likely changed, you're likely considering moving to more toward digital um, to help support that customer expectation. So everything I've mentioned here and I've touched on already will lead to that perfect storm that fosters have been anticipating. And it's much as the drivers of the type of fraud we're expecting to increase, uh, type of frauds we're expecting to see increase. So what are they? So identity theft is not the only fraud risk expected to increase during this economic downturn. We see both synthetic ID as well as first party fraud trends expected to increase. So that ID and first party fraudsters will have the same opportunity as I mentioned to the economic release being offered by you. Uh, with synthetic ID, a typical behavior will see a dramatic increase in utilization along with return payments in the later stages. Now you'll have, now they will have access to temporary credit line increases and ability to exceed their credit line. This is very enticing to them. And they're likely to try to strategically bust out to take advantage of this opportunity or the additional credit line exposure provided through these reliefs. Now, combating synthetic ID losses will continue to for you to c include customer identification and risk assessment authentication efforts and account opening. But moving forward, you may also want to include evaluations of synthetic ID against your portfolio through other efforts as well. And, and also try to establish more of a proactive customer reach out by phone or email, which can lead to significantly manual overwhelming if they're not targeted. So as you're rolling out your customer elite programs, part of the risk strategy you may want to consider for treaty synthetics is to segment and prioritize the at-risk and on-books population. So you can use something like our synthetic ID scoring model and then layering that with your own data to strategically target customers to authenticate and then appropriately manage economic relief. Now with high unemployment rates, businesses are forced to pause operations, uh, financial stress could drive an increase uh, first party fraud. This type of fraud often overlaps with credit risk as well. And first party fraud here is committed by true parties here who intentionally abuse accounts to maximize credit exposure, overdraft deposit accounts, and then walk away from the debt without intentions of repayment. Now solving for first party fraud can be challenging as well, but consider also leveraging our scores that predicts bust outs and first payment defaults to improve your ability to limit your credit exposure, reduce losses here. Again, you could definitely consider using our, our scores and, and analytics that aid with identifying first party fraud risk to create segments within your delinquent portfolio and then apply the right size of release and then optimize your collection recovery efforts through this type of risk-based segmentation treatment. So how do you exactly do that? Um, I put together an illustration of what I think would, would help you then segment your highest risk population so and then strategically target customers for authentication and then also appropriately managing your economic relief efforts. On the buff, uh, bottom left-hand corner here, I created this risk matrix. So across the vertical axis or the y-axis you want to consider is our fraud scores. And then across the bottom here, or the x-axis, you want to consider is using your own information like, you know, past dues, remaining balance, type of relief requested, or utilization of credit. The idea is you're starting to plot your different customers in each of these quadrants, so then you not only have a priority to help focus your efforts, 
but also have a method of proactively reaching out to your customers. So for your more critical fraud risk population in the upper right-hand quadrant there, you may want to consider a high-touch authentication method like a direct phone call or even a vi uh, using video interviews for more of your synthetic type of frauds. You know, typically these methods are high deterrents for third-party fraudsters because they're not always at a physical location. It'll be easier for you to spot out if they even try to delay that engagement. Now, for your first-party fraudsters within this uh, in this higher quadrant or this upper right-hand quadrant, uh, you'll likely they'll likely pass their authentication methods because they are the true party. They are using their own information. So this is where you may want to decide to bring that customer's information into your business as usual team for further additional underwriting or deeper review for extra scrutiny. Now, if you move to the left of that, which is more of your medium to high risk accounts that will um, that you may for those you may want to consider setting up a authentication method with a with with a little bit of friction but less touch like um, where you're not calling them where you're deploying a solution like a one-time passcode or text message or even introducing a knowledge-based authentication for first party fraud here in this bucket in the medium high risk bucket you're still likely to need to manually review those, but then you would know to prioritize, prioritize these lower than those with a high balance and are requesting relief. Just you definitely want to prioritize them a little bit lower than your upper right quadrant. So then for your true customers in relief and your lower quadrants there in the, in the bottom left-hand corner, you may want to then proactively reach out by email or mail to provide a more streamlined customer experience overall. So now the benefit to you is you have a, a strategy to focus your high touch resources on your highest risk customers, but then also provide a, best, a better overall customer experience to your real and best legitimate customers who are in true need of relief. You have a proactive, in addition to the, you also have a proactive instead of a reactive strategy that protects your bottom line because we know after the fact that prevention is is already too late because they've already in, in penetrated or impacted your portfolio. In the next slide here, I've put together a, a, a number of different items you may want to consider as well to include as part of your process. So things like um, trying to identify whether there's been a new device uh, logged into these specific accounts where, or other type of accounts take over like behaviors, look for situations where there's a new phone number being introduced as part of this account where it's not previously associated to the account. Identify when there's a shift to address that's very different from the bis uh, business address. The fourth bullet point here is, you know, we're, we're definitely in a very atypical time, but it's still Worth, worth noting to try and spot some atypical behavior associated accounts. That way you're, you have a way to still try to establish a, a norm or atypical C outside of your normal C, right? Or what you expect to be normal behavior with that specific account. In addition to that, you should also, there's definitely scenarios that bring brought up where you have an existing business that's likely to fold to remove that debt but then open up that same business with a, un, a new name. Definitely try to look out for that type of behavior. Um, one of the more interesting ones and, and a little bit harder to spot is the email address. We, I've definitely seen scenarios where applications come through with an email address or the, the, the email domain just very slightly from the actual true domain or email. We're, we're just talking about one or two character differences there. Uh, one of the ways you want to really start looking at is having a solution, having some data that allow you to look at a website's traffic historically. We found that website traffic for a shell company, uh, for a synthetic company, is very hard to replicate. So if you're able to look at if there's actually historical website traffic, that should give you a good indication whether this potentially could be a, a fake company or an illegitimate company. And then lastly, we do see um, occurrences, situations where there are businesses as well as customers, they're manipulating the financial and tax documents. So consider implementing some type of solution to help you quickly evaluate the, um, the genuine 
the January C of these, uh, these official documents, but then also your analysts should have that experience to quickly spot out where things are being manipulated and um, and not actual truth to the actual document itself. So this really covers what I wanted to touch on today. So in summary, just be wary that this is unprecedented time of fraudsters are acting now. First party and ID theft and synthetic ID theft is on the rise. Segmentation and prioritization on your existing portfolio will go a long way to provide relief to your best customers and also help you prioritize um, your resourcing and reduce costs. Layer fraud defense that combines multiple or different solutions on the right-hand side uh, will be needed to have a sound strategy, especially when entering the digital channel. I think this will be ever important. Um, if you really like this slide, it also lays out how long, how quickly usually it takes to implement something like this. So if you really need something much more quicker, it consider introducing things like just adding more alternative data, maybe some of our scores, and then we're also happy to help you through this with any type of consultation for your business. So thanks for joining us today. I hope I was able to provide a few actionable ideas on how to mitigate fraud during this crisis. If you have any questions or want to learn more about what I discussed today, feel free to ask in that chat box in here in WebEx or follow the link to send us a message. But also, please let us know what you thought about today's session. If you have other topics you'd like for us to tackle in future episodes, you know, just point your cell phone camera at this QR code on your screen and take that quick survey. We just want to make sure we're covering the, the right topics that are important to you. So again, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it.